If you are just learning watercolors and you would like to know how to paint fall flowers in an easy way, then you may enjoy this tutorial. I am going to show you how to paint five fall flowers. My name is Teresa. I'm a surface pattern designer and watercolor artist. And this channel is all about learning to paint with watercolors in a very intuitive, relaxed, easy way. Welcome back everyone. Well, I've selected five fall flowers and I've picked flowers that have very different characteristics. So their leaves are all different, their blooms are different, just so we would have a nice variety. Now, a couple of them, like snapdragons for instance, you may look at and think, that's a spring flower. Well, yes it is, but it's also a fall flower. It just doesn't care for the summer heat. So we'll see them in both times of the year, spring and fall. Well, let's look at the others and see what we're going to paint today. I took some reference photos off of Unsplash for us. So these are all the flowers that we are going to paint today. The first one we are going to do is a marigold. And so as you can see, it looks like a very complicated flower, but we're, we are going to really simplify that. So with the marigold, they're round, and this one's facing us, so it's very round, but I'm going to do it kind of at an angle, so it'll be a little more oval than round. And the other thing we want to notice are the leaves. So they're fairly dark, and so they have a little center part with all these little leaves coming off of it. So there's a little stem for every leaf. So there's the stem and all these leaves coming off of it. And lots of them, as you can see, marigolds have lots of greenery. So we'll want to take that into account as well. And I'm going to try to keep this kind of on the smaller side. Um, I'd like to be able to get them all on one page, but we'll just see how that goes. So right in the center here, I just have a little, few little hash marks. And then, so I could just do this in a scribble sort of way, which I love scribble painting, but there's another way that will give us a little more detail. So, and it's just as easy, so I'll show you that. So kind of like with a rose, we want to put our tip down and just make these little petals, these little squiggly petals. Make it a little bit lighter and do more. And they can touch or not touch. We do want some white space. but not too much white space. We don't want to overdo the white space. And I'm just going in this oval type direction. And the further out we go, the larger my little scallops are. Now I'm using the side of my brush even. And I'll put just a little bit on the other side. And we can kind of scribble in here a little bit if we want to fill in. And I'm going to grab that little bit of that orange and just touch. But just for some shadowing, I'm adding a little bit of a, an orange. I'm gonna do two. While I was editing this, it was getting very, very lengthy, ridiculously lengthy, actually. Um, you know, I, I tend to paint very slowly when I'm talking, so I'm going to spare you that, and I'm going to speed this up and just talk you through those parts. So here, I'm just painting a second bloom, just like the first one, just so that you can see it 
again. And I'm using, I didn't say this, but I'm using Windsor Yellow for the base flower and Windsor Orange for the shadowing within the flower. And then this is just a, my typical sap green mixture for the foliage. So remember how those leaves came off one large, one long stem? That's what I'm doing here. And I'm just using my silver brush for that. Very easy. And I'll actually use three different sizes of the silver brush for different size leaves. You can do it any way you want. I just varied it so that I could have smaller leaves like this one that I've just done in the background and then some larger leaves for that first branch that just comes out at us that just helps with that visual and so that's all very easy so that's really all there is to this flower you just add as many leaves as you want and we're done Now let's move over here and do a, a crocus. Now a crocus is, I have two pictures for that. So crocus looks like this. They have these nice full petals that come down to a point. They kind of start with the smaller point and end with down in a cone like and that's darker, then it turns to green, and they have these long leaves, kind of these spiky looking leaves. And the inside are orange stamens. So let's move right over here and we'll do our crocus. And I am going to use a filbert brush for this. So a number four, like mine is going to be fairly small, so I'm using a small one. And I'm taking violet, and I want it pretty light because we're going to have petals on top of petals. So we want the first petals to be fairly light. So I'm doing two back petals first. going to bring them down like that and we'll let that dry okay that's dry now so now I'm going to take that same violet but a little darker and I'm going to do that center one and it's going to take at least two strokes maybe three Oops, got that a little too dry. Oh, and that was a little too dark. I don't want it that dark. Okay, and now we want two off to the side, and then we'll do two on the other side. And you can make these petals as long as you want. I'm just going to add this bottom portion here because I'm going to do that darker. And this would be so easy to do as well if you want to do it with like a mop brush or a really large round brush. Um, you know, it, there's no wrong way to do this. Your, your whole goal is just to get this bowl shape with these, these petals in this shape. And then we'll put a stem on it and we are going to do those really long leaves that just kind of go all around this flower. But now I'm just adding some more darker pigment and I'm using violet here. And I'm going to actually add a little center vein right there running through that petal. But this is a super easy one. And then we'll add a stamen. And I, like I said, I changed brush sizes two or three times. So I used a silver brush, a size six, a four, and also a two. And just like we did with the actual bloom, 
I'm doing the leaves, the first ones lighter, and then coming back and going a little bit darker on top of those. And then I will finish it up with much darker in the very front. And that's it for the crocus. I don't know how I did this, but I deleted a whole section off my camera and two of the, the pieces were the two next flowers that we're going to paint. So I'm going to paint them over for you. I cannot believe I did that. The next one is a snap dragon. And I've painted this many times before and every time I do it a little differently. So it's just one stalk with a lot of blooms on it. And today I'm going to show you how to do it with the wedge brush. When you get the knack for doing this with the wedge brush, it makes this flower very easy and fast. So it's you know, the, the characteristics we wanna look for. It's just one long stalk. It's got buds at the top and flowers down here in the middle section. So this is really a bell-shaped flower. And then it has this thick stem with a lot of little smaller leaves at the bottom. So I'm going to do it with the wedge brush. Now you can do it any way you want. Any bloom you feel comfortable with is just fine. But I'll show you how to do it with the wedge brush. And I have a whole class on the wedge brush if you want to look at that. But the easy way to do this is you just load up your brush with a very light color. So there's a lot of water in here. And then I'm going to just dab it a little bit and then dip the tip in a darker color. So I'm using Opera Pink for the light and Permanent Rose for the center. So I want one whole flower kind of in, in the middle here so that we're seeing the whole flower. That's just the way I like to start it. And I want to have it kind of going off to the side. So I'm going to place my brush down and then just wiggle it until you get a petal. And then we'll wiggle it again for another petal. And you may want to reload at this point, just kind of depends. And you can turn your paper. It's easier that way, I think. So I'm reloading my brush and we can either do three or four petals. It doesn't matter. However, it works out as fine. Okay, so there's our one bloom and let's load again. And because we have this bell shape that we're going for, and I'm kind of leaning in a little bit, we don't have to do whole flowers all the way up. We really want pieces of flowers. So I'm going to add a little piece of a flower sticking out back there. And maybe another one down here. Let me get more. And let's put one over here. You see, you just jiggle it. That's all you have to do. And now, this is easy, but it's easy after you get the feel for it. So if you are going to do this with a triangle, or sometimes it's called a petal brush, and sometimes it's called a wedge brush. So don't be discouraged if you try it once and you don't get it right. It did take me a few tries. I'm going to touch a little bit in there since that did not come out very dark. But once you do it, 
then, then it'll be so easy once you get that feel for it. Now, if you don't have a wedge brush, you don't need to use a wedge brush. I have painted these flowers so many times using a round brush, or you can use the silver brush, and you can paint the blooms any way you want. They don't have to be like this. In fact, these blooms really, to me, are more like gladiolus. So, you know, snapdragons and gladiolus are, are very, very similar. Their blooms just are a little bit different, but you know, I don't really worry about that. I just think this particular type of bloom looks pretty on it. And then now here we're putting the buds up at the top and it's really nice if you can vary your greens up here, just to add a little bit and also throw in a few leaves just to help give it some bulk. And the stem starts out thin on the thinner side and then gets thicker as it gets toward the ground. And you can just add as many leaves as you want throughout the whole thing. And then we'll add leaves in the bottom as well. Now the blooms, see, they have a, a white center in the picture, but I'm adding yellow here just so that it'll stand out more. And I'm also going to add a little bit of the pink up in the buds, just because I think that looks pretty when, you know, you have your colors spread out so that all the green is not in one spot and all the pink is not in another spot. You really want to spread it out a little bit. And then we'll, we'll just add these, these leaves all over at the bottom, just like the photo. Very easy. Now looking at our reference photo for the cosmos, we'll want to look at these petals. There's three little humps right here at the end, and that's what makes it distinguishable. And then with these, it kind of has these lines coming down the petal. Then it has kind of a bowl shape, and not always, but sometimes the, the, the petals kind of go in a, a bowl shape. Now you see these, they don't. And then also the leaf pattern is very interesting. It has these like fingers that come off of the center part of the leaf. So that will be fun to paint. Now I've mixed up several purples together, violets, just to get a color that's similar to the picture. So first we go down the middle and then we go along either side so that we get those humps. Now, from the petals that are on the side like this, you don't see that hump quite as much. So some of these I'm only putting two little, little humps on it. Two little brush marks. Now for the greenery, it's your basic greenery. Let's just do a stem and then I'm going to have two little blooms branching off of the main bloom, just for the fun of it. And I'm using all my favorite greens. I'm just kind of mixing up whatever, whatever green. I have a little bit of olive in here and my sap green and deep sap green. Now I'm using a filbert brush here to do this leaf. And that makes it very easy to do that leaf shape because the filbert brush has that rounded tip. So that's all there was to that leaf. Very easy. And then I'll just do a couple of little blooms that are opening right there. We'll do the center in yellow. We'll add in a couple of extra tiny leaf, little leaflets. And I'm putting a little Van Dyke Brown around the center just to help that yellow center pop against the violet, that very pale violet. And then I'll just add in a few of those little, those little strokes. And that's the easy way to do a cosmos. Next, we're going to do a pansy. 
Now looking at our reference photo, you can see right off this bow shape in the lighter color here with the darker yellow at the bottom and then two dark purples in the back. That is the perfect way to paint a pansy. And then you can always rotate it if you need, you know, when you're doing a bunch of pansies, you just rotate that bow around and that way you can always have a well-formed pansy. And the leaf there, I went kind of fast on it. You might want to go back and, and slow it down, but the leaf is very flat with little scalloped edges. So we'll talk about that again in a minute. So I'm going to start out and just put clear water down in the bow shape. And then I will just drop in some yellow and a little buff just to give a little color so you can see it better. And I'm just going to move that pigment around until I get it how I want it really. So you're painting wet on wet here, just the bow part, just those two petals. And while I'm doing that, I want to tell you when I was in editing, I needed to do a short real quick, so I grabbed my wedge brush and painted a pansy with my wedge brush. And oh my goodness, I will always paint pansies with wedge brushes now. It was so easy. In fact, I will put up above the little link to that short so that you can see it. Now I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom here with the darker yellow. So that bottom petal Will just be a darker yellow but this is the the standard way to paint a pansy that i'm showing you right now and if you don't have a wedge brush this is an easy way to do it but as you're going to see this takes a little time to do it because you have to wait for each petal to dry before you can move on to the next petal with the wedge brush you can paint these first three petals immediately and then you you have to dry them to do the back petals but so i only do the first three petals with the wedge brush after that i did change back over to the silver brush and finish it out just like i'm doing it here but i want to encourage you while you're watching me do this this pansy here you know though if you don't have a wedge brush that's just fine but I would encourage you, don't be intimidated by the wedge brush. It is a really neat brush. And when you see that short where I painted the pansy, you're going to see just how quick it was. It's amazing. And, you know, the wedge brush will do a lot of different things. But just like I painted with the Snapdragon or the Gladiola here, if you just do that little wiggle procedure to make your petal, it's very, very easy. So I just want to encourage you to, to give it a try. I think once, once you do it a few times and you see how easy it is, and you can check out that other video that I have that talks extensively about it, um, I, I think you'll be hooked. I'm completely hooked, especially now that I did the pansy. I'm really hooked on it. I love it. So see, this pansy is taking a while, and this is the sped up version. It's easy, but it just takes some time. And I even used the blow dryer on it to get it dry. And I'm going back in over this first violet petal. It was very, very light. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shadowing. It just dried a little lighter than I wanted it. And then I'm just going to go back and add those little darker lines around it, just like our reference photo had. And then I'll do the foliage. And just the basic stem. And then that leaf that was a little more flat and had the scalloped edges. So I'm just going to do those little, little scalloped edges. And in the short that I did, I actually switched over to the filbert brush 
to do these leaves and that was a breeze. So you may want to try the leaves with the filbert brush because it I just did the scallops very easily. Not that this was difficult, but I just think the the filbert brush did a better job. And that's it. There are our five flowers. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you have any questions, just pop them in the comments below and I will get right back to you. Thank you so much for watching, for commenting, for subscribing. You are helping my channel grow so fast and I'm so appreciative and I love the fact that you are enjoying the content. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Thanks so much and hope to see you next week.